I'm starting this video a little differently because I have some exciting news. You may have seen me wearing the Top 5's hoodie in some of my videos, and ever since I first showed it, I've had hundreds of people asking me where they can get one. Well, I'm super excited to release the new store tab on the Top 5's website, but if you do decide to get one, I want it to be something more than just a regular hoodie. Despite me making a lot of scary videos, something that is very close to my heart is inspiring others to become the best they can be. Now, whenever I am tired or feeling a little unmotivated, I rock that Top 5's hoodie and just feel in the zone and ready to take on the world. I want that to be the same for you. Know that if you are wearing it, you can dream big and achieve whatever you set your mind to. So that's it. There is a limited amount of stock of hoodies, but if you want one, then click on the screen if you're on a PC, or click the card on the right hand side if you're on a mobile. Anyway, that's enough of that, and let's get started with this video. Space is a truly fascinating place and is constantly proving to us that we are a million miles away from understanding what's going on out there. It's just full of mysteries, and although I've mentioned a few in some previous videos, these five are a little different. These mysteries and discoveries are not only still unexplained, but also incorporate the possibility of extraterrestrials being responsible for them. The more I researched for this video, the more I was blown away. And you're going to want to stay for number one, because it could be one of the first times aliens have been publicly considered by top scientists. Unexplained radio signals from space. We have all heard of the WOW signal and are probably tired of hearing about it now, but there is a much more interesting signal that for over 10 years has been reaching Earth and baffling scientists. Initially it was thought that the signals were the result of a glitch in the telescope instruments, but after years of analysing, astronomers accept that these signals do actually exist and are known as fast radio bursts. Radio emissions that are not only very infrequent, but are also very hard to find. Now it's not fully understood what exactly is producing these signals, although it's widely believed that they originate several billion light years away. To date, only 11 of these radio pulses have been officially recorded around the world, but the most recent of these signals has renewed the interest of scientists and UFO enthusiasts. They were picked up in Australia using a Parkes radio telescope and the first signal came as a double blast of waves followed by four single bursts. Until these recent signals, scientists thought they were caused by a cataclysmic event such as neutron stars colliding and causing a one-off explosion, but this has now been dismissed with the discovery of these multiple bursts. This is now the driving force behind further research into fast radio bursts, and scientists are keen to pinpoint exactly where these waves are coming from. And with the help of three massive telescopes, research starts this year in 2016. So what do you think the signals could be? There are many who want to believe that the waves are coming from extraterrestrial technology and this theory hasn't been dismissed. And the fact that scientists are spending so much money on something that happens so infrequently makes you wonder if they also want to believe this theory. Ceres Every planet in and outside of the Earth's solar system can be classed as a mystery. A mystery in the fact that in reality we know very little about them. In fact, we know very little about our own planet, let alone all of the others. But there's one planet that really sticks out to astronomers, and it's called Ceres. Ceres is a dwarf planet that is located between Mars and Jupiter. It's 590 miles, or 950 kilometers across, and was first spotted in 1801 by Cilian astronomer Father Giuseppe Piazzi. And since then, it has sparked many questions that have been left unanswered. One of the main ones is the fact that Ceres is thought to have a layer of subsurface ice or water, as you know, water is something scientists look for on other planets, as where there is water, there is an increased possibility of life existing or once being present. Since there are many signs that Ceres is covered in subsurface water, you can see why NASA are excited to explore it. Just imagine all of that water and there being absolutely no form of life there. It's entirely possible, but does sound hard to believe. Also, if there is water on the dwarf planet, then there is a theory that Ceres was responsible for bringing water to Earth. To add to its wonders, when the Dawn space probe reached the dwarf planet in March 2015, a whole host of new mysteries were brought forward. The biggest being, as it approached the planet, several mysterious bright spots inside craters were observed. It was unlike anything seen before, and there was no obvious sign as to what they were. Thoughts on what the glowing spots are range from a white mineral compound beneath Ceres' top layer to highly reflective salts, and the thought that the lights are being emitted from an underground base home to another life form. Although that one may sound a bit far-fetched, NASA have said that they do not know what exactly the glowing is, and to add to the mystery, it was recently reported that the brightness of the lights has been changing in intensity, reducing the odds that it is a mineral compound. 
Among the bright spots, the Dawn probe also spotted something that no one expected to see, a huge 3-4 mile high dome that has been labelled the Lonely Planet. How or why it was formed is unknown, and it stands there on its own on the barren planet. So that is a few of the many mysteries series has shown us, and I'm sure with our increasing interest to research the dwarf planet, many more exciting mysteries will be brought forward in the years to come. Music on the Moon The Apollo 10 mission was a testing the ground that preceded Apollo 11. It launched on May 8, 1969, and was sent up to test all of the technology and components that had been put in place for the upcoming moon landing. Its successful mission enabled Apollo 11 to make, depending on your beliefs, the first moon landing in July of that year. So although it's not well known, Apollo 10 was a very important mission and also held the record for the highest speed achieved by a manned vehicle, when it attained speeds of up to 24,791 miles per hour during its return from the moon. But although the mission has gone relatively unknown, there was a mysterious incident that happened during the Apollo 10 mission, an incident that was kept a secret until 2008. It seems it wasn't just mission control that the astronauts heard through their headsets. They also heard mysterious and unexplained music that to this day no one can explain. The sound was first heard as the capsule was on the far side of the moon. The astronauts, as expected, lost radio communication with Earth, and during the hour of lost contact, the astronauts can be heard discussing what they are hearing. It's obvious that it is not the normal sounds of space that they are familiar with, so what was it? There are a couple of theories including magnetic fields or atmosphere causing issues with the headsets, although this has been dismissed as the moon does not have enough atmosphere to cause any issues and has virtually no magnetic field. Other speculation has centred around aliens or some other form of life that we are not aware of interfering with the astronauts equipment. Take a listen to the actual audio. That hit music even sounds outer spacey, doesn't it? Do you hear that? That whistling sound? Yeah. Woo! Yeah, it sounds like, uh, you know, outer space type music. Boy, that sure is weird music. No. It's a whistling, you know, like an outer space type thing. To date, there is no explanation for what it was, and NASA seemed concerned enough about the recordings to keep them hidden from the public for over three decades. Life on Venus When we think of life outside of Earth, most people will agree that there must be some form of life out there. When thinking about the closest possible form of life to us, Mars has always been the likely candidate. But what about Venus? Could there really be any life there? Conditions are thought to be hell-like, with extremely high temperatures of up to 462 degrees Celsius, and although its structure is similar to Earth, its atmospheric pressure is 90 times higher than ours, meaning the chances of anything ever being able to survive there are very slim. But if you saw my recent Mariana Trench documentary about the deepest section of ocean on Earth, you will know that we have been shown that life can exist in the harshest conditions. But why has Venus been brought into the list of planets that could support life? Well, a few years back, a Russian space expert studied photographs taken by a Soviet probe that landed on Venus's surface in 1982, and he couldn't believe what he saw. He claims the photos show a scorpion-like creature and a disc that appears to be moving. He believes that this is proof that there is life on Venus, and although people are quick to dismiss the disc as a lost lens cap, and the scorpion shape as just noise in the digital image, it's an interesting discussion, especially when you find out how respected and qualified this man is. So, although the conditions on Venus seem impossible for life, we do know that clouds 50 or so kilometers above Venus actually have similar living conditions to Earth. So maybe he is onto something, and Venus should be explored for possible signs of life. What do you think? Is KIC 8462852 home to another civilization? This next discovery and mystery sparked these remarkable words from Penn State University astronomy professor Jason Wright. Aliens should always be the very last hypothesis you consider, but this looks like something you would expect an alien civilization to build. That is a very bold thing to say, but what is this in reference to? It's in reference to something that is happening on or around a star called KIC 8462852, a star that is 1400 light years away from Earth and is brighter than the Sun. Over a period of four years, NASA's Kevlar Space Telescope has been watching this star and its surrounding area and cannot work out why its brightness has been changing in intensity. 
You see, all of the bright objects that can be observed in space dip in brightness when objects pass in front of them as seen from Earth or a spacecraft. This is a great way for astronomers to find out what is orbiting a star or planet. This was in fact Kepler's main purpose, to detect the dimming of a mother star or planet caused by exoplanets and such passing in front of them. But the thing is with this is that the light will dim no more than 1%, yet KIC has been recorded dimming up to 22% and is not in any kind of formation like an exoplanet orbiting would be. The original explanation for this irregular dimming was large clouds of comets that were passing in front of the star, but this was dismissed. Then the possibility of it being dust passing was brought up, but since dust would warm up and glow on the infrared, and KIC is giving off the predicted amount of infrared, this shows that there is very little if any dust flying around. All of this may sound a bit crazy, especially the thought that it could possibly be extraterrestrial. But this isn't some overnight hype, it's been studied for a while now, and out of all of the stars and planets that have been observed over the years, nothing like this has ever been seen before. And when you realise highly credible professionals like Michio Kaku have given their views, things get even more interesting. Michio has done a few interviews about the star, and when asked if he thinks it's an alien superstructure, he said they have ruled out all of the other possibilities, such as comets, planets, or asteroids passing in front of the star, and that it could be a giant purpose-built structure that is surrounding KIC and harvesting its energy. He said so himself that it does sound crazy, but there is no other explanation for what's going on, and the possibility of an extraterrestrial civilization cannot be ruled out. It's one thing to hear things like this from websites, but when astronomers, scientists, and physicists are talking about alien life, things get a whole lot more believable. In 2012, three years after its launch, Kepler, the spacecraft that spotted the dimming lights on KIC, started having problems, and it's now been left so we can no longer explore this star further. But it sparked so much interest that starting in 2016, radio telescopes will be used to try and listen in for any radio waves coming from this star. So, is KIC home to a huge alien megastructure, or is the dimming a natural unheard of event? Who knows, but one thing's for sure, it's an interesting star, and I cannot wait for what the future findings will be. So that's five space mysteries that all involve some kind of possibility of extraterrestrials being involved. Take a moment tonight to look up at the stars and realise how tiny we are on this planet. It really puts things into perspective and makes you realise how many of us overlook the most important things in life and worry far too much about the meaningless things. Thanks for watching, don't forget to go check out the new top 5 store and I'll see you next week for another video.